and welcome back to Witch Fix. Today I'm going to be looking at book one in a book series which is called Book of Shadows by Kate Tiernan. Uh, that's book one. The series is known as the Wicker series in some countries and the Sweep series in others. Wicker makes sense to me because it's about Wicker. Sweep doesn't make sense to me at all because none of the characters is Dick Van Dyke. None of them sweeps chimneys and it doesn't involve a sock puppet from Sooty or Sweep. So that title still confuses me and if you have any reason as to why it would have been called that, do let me know. Now, I always saw these books in Otica's Showing My Age and Waterstones when I was younger and they always had them in sort of the young adult section and I always wanted to read them because obviously they say Wicker on them in big letters and that was quite a draw for me. But as I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with who try and find books in a series in a bookshop, it's nearly impossible to find one that stocks book one. Especially true if you're ever looking at manga, they usually have like book four and book six and that's your lot. Uh, also, the books don't really say in them, they don't really have a list in the front that say like which book comes first or which book is in order. So it's quite difficult to work out where to start. So I never actually read these as a teenager, but when I got into thinking about things to review for this podcast, I did sort of think about them. And as luck would have it, I found someone selling nearly all of the books on eBay. So I bought the first three as a lot and read those while I was on holiday. Now, Kate Tiernan isn't actually a person. It's the pen name of a lady called Gabrielle Charbonnet, who wrote this series and some other series under the name Kate Tiernan and Samus herself. I'll be focusing on the Sweep series, which is, I think, about 15 books. Obviously, there'll be inevitable comparisons drawn between these and the Circle of Three series, because that's also young adult fiction written about paganism under a pseudonym. Also 15 books in the series. All 15 books were published between 2001 and 2003, which is not a lot of time, but they are also not very long. They're about 180 to 250 pages long each, which is barely more than a pamphlet, to be honest, but I guess for teenagers that's quite a good length. And they are quite quick reads. The chapters are very short. Uh, the font is actually quite big as well, and the chapter headings take up half a page. So I think they were actually pushing it to get it to the sort of 200 page mark, which normally I would criticise, but again, if it's for young adults, you know, you want a shorter read for them, I suppose, to try and draw them in. So the Sweep series, which was again released as the Wicker series in the UK and Ireland, which are correct because, again, I don't know why you would call it Sweep. I'm going to stop going on about it now, but it really does annoy me. Uh, the series focuses on a teenage girl. Surprise, surprise. Her name is Morgan Rowlands, and she discovers that she is the descendant of a long line of witches and possesses powerful magic. And the first three books, which are the only ones that I've read of the series so far, kind of deal with that awakening and her discovery of that. Now, despite the fact that the series has wicker stamped across the front in massive letters, as well as a pentagram on the cover and the fact that the title of the first one is Book of Shadows, which is the Wiccan or Pagan name for a witch's spell book. The books aren't themselves about wicker, generally, uh, which I found a little bit confusing when I started to read it. They've done this thing that kind of happens in a lot of fiction when they start using the word wicker, which is they include maybe five things that are actually wicker and then they just make the rest up. The made up stuff in these books is that there are Wiccans who practice wicker and those are people who have just come to it who are just normal people. But there are also blood witches. A uh, blood witch is basically what you would call a hereditary witch. They come from a long line of people who are also blood witches and they have actual real powerful powers. Morgan, the main character of the book series, is one such blood witch and she meets a guy who is another blood witch and they start sort of experimenting with magic. I was a little bit turned off from the book when I first started trying to read it because title headings are written in that weird kind of blurry edged spray painty edgy hardcore teen book font which made me roll my eyes just a little bit and because the first page is basically just a description of what the main character is wearing which I kind of look down on as it's one of those things that they tell you when you 
go to uni for creative writing it's like never open your book with a character looking in the mirror and going I looked in the mirror and I saw that I had straight red hair and light violet eyes and I didn't like my nose and it, it's it's very kind of Bella Swan writing it's just not great also and I went back and counted these because I'm just that anal about it 14 fully named characters were introduced in four pages most of whom we don't actually need to know the names of and who we never see or think about again but they are literally fully named characters and I'll read you that first couple of pages in a minute um, and you do get quite confused very quickly as I did and again that's one of those things that they teach you in like undergraduate creative writing which is when you start writing your book don't have your character look straight into a mirror and describe themselves and don't introduce loads and loads of characters who we don't need to know yet because the redo is still trying to get accustomed to your writing and your voice and get absorbed into the story and they don't need to be given everyone's full name and measurements and all the rest of this information that they feel like they have to hold on to but they actually don't so basically morgan is your average girl at school and then a new kid joins the school called cal and he's kind of cool and all the girls like him straight away and he invites everyone to this party in the woods and at the party he just kind of springs wicker on them he basically says like oh today's the equinox who wants to do a circle and celebrate and these are just kids that he's just met from school and brought out to the woods for a party and i felt that, that was like not a great thing to do even if we're just talking about like neo-paganism here you don't just round up a bunch of kids from your school and go like oh hey i know what will be fun he's meant to have been raised in wicca but his mum he would know that this is not something that you just kind of spring on people and expect them to be okay with or comfortable with that was kind of weird to me the way that they kind of did that and then when they do the circle a couple of them are kind of messing around and being like oh, this is a bit silly and weird and then he like bans them from future circles so straight away he's kind of creating this impression that he's this guy who very much uses Wicca slash paganism as a way to make himself seem more important than he actually is and to give himself power in a social sense compared unfavorably with the circle of three book series because i feel like that has a very nurturing and very um, spiritual approach to wicca whereas this one kind of brought in more of those social power play elements um, that might be experienced by teenagers already for like different things but has probably been experienced by people who are involved in paganism so it it sort of brought out more of the negative elements than in circle of three there's also this idea of blood which is which are brought in all of the blood which is hail from seven great clans who are basically have a sort of house associated with them so it's a bit like saying that you're a hufflepuff um except that there are seven and not four and obviously there is an evil clan which are the woodbanes who are basically slytherin and they've never done anything nice and all witches hate them a couple of rituals get done in the book and this is at a point where it still feels like we're dealing with wicca as opposed to the sort of made up law of witchcraft and blood witchcraft which is going to be explained later by the author so it struck me as a bit odd that when they do casting a circle they just draw a circle on the ground there's no sort of mention of raising energy or actually like visualization or any of the stuff that you would normally do but there we go again peer pressure rears its ugly head at the second circle that they do because cal takes them on that side and suggests that everyone gets naked and gets in the pool uh, morgan doesn't feel that comfortable with that but there is quite a lot of pressure and again one of the things you read in like books about paganism that are aimed at teenagers non-fiction books is that you shouldn't have to do anything you're not comfortable with so i felt that overall this wasn't giving a great impression of wicca and the wiccan community and it was definitely showing a dysfunctional side to the coven tin coven aspect in in diametric opposition to the circle of three series and then I looked up the author and kind of looked at her against the author of the Circle of Three series. 
And I think it's quite telling that she is not a practitioner of Wicca or paganism or anything like that, whereas the author of the Circle of Three series is. So what you have here is the Wicca series written by a sort of enthusiastic admirer, I guess, of neo-paganism and Wicca versus someone who actually, without wanting to be too blunt, knows what they're talking about and who wants to portray their faith in a way that is nurturing and positive as opposed to this slightly darker and more sensationalised approach. So once I kind of made my peace with that's the way it was going to be, I found myself enjoying the book a lot more because I love a bit of teenage drama and this book had it in spades. Uh, Morgan ends up falling out with her best friend Brie because they both, surprise surprise, like Cal and a lot of those kind of teenage drama politics make their presence known in the circle and in the coven that they form. Um, so that was quite an interesting read and I did read it quite quickly because I wanted to follow these sort of dramatic storylines. It was a bit like watching Grange Hill, if Grange Hill had been set in an American high school and a lot more interesting. I don't think that it should have featured Wicca so prominently as the name of the series, which I know is only the name of the series in the UK and Ireland, but still, I don't think it should have featured that as much or used the word Wicca so much. I think if it had just said witchcraft, then I would have not had that initial stumble about a third of the way in when I was like, this isn't Wicca, and this is a kind of a negative portrayal of something that is sort of a poor facsimile of Wicca. But I digress. The Book of Shadows book basically follows Morgan's discovery of witchcraft through Cal, her involvement in the coven, her gradual falling out with her best friend Brie, and then at the end of the book she decides to go against Brie's wishes and formally dedicate herself to joining Cal's coven, which he is forming from high schoolers. And that's where that book ends, and then you go into the second and third books, which I will do separate episodes on later. So I'm going to read you a bit from chapter one, which is the introduction, which basically names every character at this high school and honestly was quite a struggle to get through. The chapter is called Cal Blair in the giant teenage font and every chapter starts with like a little quote about witches or mages or warlocks or various other things that they get called. These are not actually very positive quotes. They sort of run to the more Malleus Maleficarum type theme of how to spot witches, hunt witches, get rid of witches, the bad things that witches might do, which gives the book kind of an overall more sinister feel. And I definitely suspect Cal of being up to something because, you know, if a teenage girl is interested in him, then he's definitely trouble. So this is chapter one of Book of Shadows by Kate Tiernan. Years from now, I'll look back and remember today as the day I met him. I'll look back and remember the exact moment my life began to include him. I will remember it forever. I wore a green tie-dyed t-shirt and jeans. My best friend, Bree Warren, arrived in a peasant shirt and a long black skirt down to her violet toenails, and of course she looked beautiful and sophisticated. Hey, Junior, she greeted me with a hug, even though I'd just seen her the day before. See you in AP Calc, I told Janice Utah, and met Bree halfway down the front steps. Hey, I said back, it's hot. It's supposed to be crisp on the first day of school. It wasn't even 8.30, but the early September sun was burning whitely, and the air felt muggy and still. Despite the weather, I felt excited, expectant. A whole new year was starting, and we were finally upperclassmen. Maybe in the Yukon territory, Bree suggested. You look great. Thanks, I said, appreciating her diplomacy. You too. Bree looks like a model. She's tall, 5'9", and has a figure most girls would starve themselves for, except Bree eats everything and thinks dieting is for lemmings. She has minky dark hair that she usually gets styled in Manhattan, so it falls in perfectly tousled waves to the base of her neck. Wherever we go, people turn their heads to look at her. The thing about Brie is that she knows she's gorgeous and she enjoys it. She doesn't shrug off compliments or complain about her looks or pretend she doesn't know what people are talking about, but she isn't exactly conceited either. She just accepts what she looks like and thinks it's cool. 
Bree glanced over my shoulder at Widow's Veil High. Its red brick walls and tall Palladian windows betrayed its former incarnation as our town courthouse. They didn't paint the woodwork, she said. Again. Nope. Oh my God, look at Raven Meltzer, I said. She got a tattoo. Raven's a senior and the wildest girl in our school. She has dyed black hair, seven body piercings, that I can see anyway, and now a circle of flames tattooed around her belly button. She's amazing to look at, at least for me. Ordinary girl with my long, all one length, medium brown hair. I have dark eyes and a nose that could kindly be described as strong. Last year I grew four inches, so I'm five six now. I have broad shoulders and no hips, and I'm still waiting for the breast fairy to show up. Raven headed to the side of the cafeteria building where the stoners hung out. Her mum must be so proud, I said cattily. Inside, I admired her daring. What would it be like to care so little about what other people thought of you? I wonder what happens to her nose stud when she sneezes, asked Bree, and I giggled. Raven nodded to Ethan Sharp, who already looked wasted at 8.30 in the morning. Chip Newton, who's absolutely brilliant in math, way better than me, and our school's most reliable dealer, gave Raven a sole handshake. Robbie Gerverich, my best friend after Bree, looked up and smiled at her. God, it's so weird to see Mary Kay here, said Bree, glancing around and running her fingers through her wind-tossed hair. Yeah, she'll fit right in, I said. My younger sister, Mary Kathleen, was headed towards the main building, laughing with a couple of her friends. Next to most of the freshmen, Mary Kay looked mature and together with grown-up curves. Stuff just comes easily to Mary Kay. Her hip but not too hip clothes, her naturally pretty face, her good but not perfect grades, her wide circle of friends. She's a genuinely nice person and everyone adores her, even me. You can't help it with Mary Kay. Hey, baby, said Chris Holly loudly, coming up to Bree. Hey, Morgan, he said to me. Chris leaned down and gave Bree a quick kiss, which she caught on her lips. Hey, Chris, I said, ready for school? Now I am, he said, giving Bree a lustful smile. Bree, Chris, Sharon Goodfine waved, gold bangles clinking on her wrist. Chris grabbed Bree's hand and pulled her towards Sharon and the other usuals, Jenna Ruiz, Matt Adler, Justin Bartlett. Coming, Bree asked, falling behind. I made a wry face. No, thank you. Morgan, they like you fine, Bree said under her breath, reading my mind as she often did. She dropped Chris's hand, waiting for while he went on ahead. It's OK. I need to talk to Tamara anyway. Bree knew I didn't feel comfortable with their clique. She paused another moment. OK, see you in homeroom. See ya. Bree began to turn away but stopped, her mouth dropping open like someone in Acting 101 doing Dumbstruck. I turned and followed her gaze and saw a boy coming up the steps to our school. It was like in a movie where everything goes into soft focus. Everyone becomes silent and time slows down while you figure out what you're looking at. It was just like that, watching Cal Blair come up the broad, worn front steps of Widow's Vale High. So as you can see from that little extract, one huge number of characters are introduced and it is very teen fictiony, for lack of a better term. I promise you it does get better after the initial introductions are made and witchcraft actually comes into the mix. The general kind of airheaded, mean girlsy feel of it kind of drifts away a little bit. Not fully, but a little bit. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and I will be looking at the other books by Kate Tiernan in the Wicker slash Sweep series in future episodes. So stay tuned for that. Get in touch on Twitter at Witchfix and via email, which is witchfixpodcast at gmail.com. So let me know if there's anything else you want me to take a look at or if you have any particular opinions about the Wicker series or want to warn me about stuff that's coming up, please do. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.